Welcome to WeConnect. The Central Bureau of Investigation, or the CBI as we know it, is of course the country's premier investigating agency. It works very silently, often unsung, and therefore we thought it's a very, very good idea for us to get to know a little more about it, and who better to tell us about that than Mr. Ashwini Kumar, who's the present director of the CBI. So thank you very much. I know that you're here just for a very short while in our city. The CBI started in 1941. It's, it's almost a relic. It's 69 years, so it's still going strong. Yes, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to NDTV Hindu channel, and I'm very happy to be in Chennai, and especially meeting with you. I know your channel has a lot of good reputation, and uh, very highly intellectual people watch this program. So it's an honor for me, and a pleasure and a privilege for me to be here today. Thank you for saying some good words about the CBI. Normally, we are always under attack, and we are being criticized. If we do a good thing, then also we are criticized by the other party. If we do any faux pas, then also, of course, we are criticized. Uh, yes, CBI is rather a very old organization, 69 years, 1941. In the Second World War, uh, it was established in the War and Supplies Department of British India. And we have come down. Chennai office was opened in 1943. And uh, Mr. H. Brown, the deputy superintendent of police, was the first in charge of the Chennai office. And uh, since then, uh, CBI is more important, uh, apart from its uh, establishment in 1941, is that uh, the CBI Act, or the DSP Act, Delhi Special Police Establishment Act, was passed in 1946 when the Constitution had not been framed, which was framed in 1950, and also the country was not independent. Therefore, yeah. it's a pre-independent, pre-Constitution organization. Right. Um, but how is it then managed to keep pace with the times then? Tell me, do you believe that it has grown, uh, you know, from then till today? You are said, how is it managed to keep? It has barely managed to keep its head above the water. Why do you say that? Why? Because our act is of 1946, and the rules and rules of evidence and the rules and procedures which are governing us are of 1946 and 1872. But we are expected to perform in 2010, in the 21st century. But isn't that difficult, sir, when you're heading yes, an organization? Yes, there is a big gap between the expectations from the organization and our ability to come up to those ex expectations. So that is the point you are saying. So would you say that that is the challenge that faces you as the director of the CBI? Yeah, yes, it's a constant challenge that not only faces our organization, but even the government. Because if they have to go to parliament for coming up with a new act, that will be another Herculean task for the party in power. Yes, but is that something that's being attempted? Uh, the Parliamentary Committee of uh, Lok Sabha, which looks after the CBI functioning, they have recommended that CBI should have a new act. And the CBI has drafted an act. It is called the CBI Act, Draft Act of 2010. And we have sent it to the Parliamentary Committee and we have sent it to the Government of India. If it is accepted, then it will be easier for the organization to come up to the expectations of the people and the government and the parliament and even the media. Right. Having said that, do you believe that your organization is in fact fulfilling the role that it was intended to? Yes, we are fulfilling the role that we, it was intended to do in 1946 with the same structure, same rules, same regulations. We are trying to perform in 2010. So I think it's a Herculean task, and the whole credit goes to my predecessors who set up such an organization which could work across the time spectrum. And the credit goes to my officers who have been constantly upgrading their skills and meeting these challenges in spite of the structure and the legal mandate being uh, quite old. Right. Now the CBI started with 24 staff. And today, I do believe that the number is around 5,000. Is that adequate? It seems like such a small, small amount of people at your disposal. Yes, it started with, uh, it's uh, very nice that you know the history of CBI. Yes, exactly with 24 staff. And the headquarters was somewhere in Lahore, Pakistan. 
and uh, today we have a staff of 5000 plus but uh, the population of the country is 110 crores or more so uh, we are expected to fight corruption uh, with 5000 staff whereas the population is so big there are more than 100 departments of the government of india there are so many public and uh, sector undertakings so i think it is a challenging task but uh, CBI has always come up to the expectations and we have always delivered. You take any important case which has been entrusted to the CBI, we have always delivered. And every time we have won the acclaim of the people and today also, according to me, we enjoy the trust of the common man. Right. Uh, I, I, I have to agree with you on this particular point that you've just made because often as a layperson, forget the media angle to this whole thing. Um, when we see, uh, we read in the papers that something has been transferred to the CBI immediately, and there's no question about this in anybody's mind, that there's a level of confidence that surely comes to the fore in people's minds. That must make you happy. Uh, it does make me happy as far as the CBI organization is concerned. But as far as the system and the country is concerned, I'm not very happy about it. Because earlier, if a crime took place, it was investigated by the local police and people felt that they would do a good job. If they could not do a good job, it was transferred to the state CID. If that also failed, then it was transferred to the CBI. And there was another outlet for the public that was the Judicial Inquiry. In 1952, Judicial Inquiries Act was passed. If there was a police firing, it was transferred to a Judicial Inquiry. But now, for even police firing, the matter is transferred to CBI. And uh, people appear to have lost faith in the local police, in the local CID, and even in the judicial inquiry system. We had the Librahan Commission going into the um, demolition of the Babri Masjid and Ram Janam Bhumi. Uh, it took 17 years. And now, all those files, all those statements, truckloads of documents have been transferred from the Librahan Commission to Ministry of Home Affairs to CBI. And now CBI is supposed to look into all those. I wish they had been given to us 17 years ago. We would have surely done a better job. Right. Why am I seeing a level of disappointment, sir, as you speak, as a police officer and as a professional policeman? Uh, in, in a way, there's a slight disappointment in your voice and in your face about the fact that the way local police and other other arms of your department actually function. Uh, because I'm basically a police officer. Indeed. I've put in 37 years of service. Half of them have been in the state government. Mm -hmm. And I need to go back and settle down in my hometown in Shimla, where CBI is not going to service or provide security and do investigations. I have to depend on the local police. So unless the citizens of this country have faith in the local police station, in the local police, in the CBI with 5,000 strength and such a vast country. We cannot be expected. Therefore, I feel that uh, it is a professional need of the system to improve the police services at the local police station level in the town and sectors of the uh, po population and the uh, towns and cities. Right. So may I ask you to just hold on for a very short while because we'll get right back. You stay right where you are because we'll be right back with you on WeConnect.